Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be counting down the top five infinite legendary farms in Borderlands 3. These are the farming spots that you can rinse and repeat. No save and quit needed. You can litter the floor in orange gold for as long as you want before inspecting all that loot. I spent just 10 minutes farming each of these and got a boatload of legendaries. I believe you know where you should focus your efforts and how you can get maximum reward for your time. But before we get to the countdown, there are a few things you can do to boost your amount of legendaries. The first is to drop down into Mayhem 10 and grab Loot Explosion as a Mayhem modifier, which grants a 10% chance for you to be rewarded with an explosion of loot every time you kill something, and it will be guaranteed on every critical kill. That pairs extremely well with the Sluter, a Welcome to Pandora Bolt Card reward as part of the Director's Cut. The Sluter increases your legendary world drop rate massively for a short while after you kill someone, coupling perfectly with Loot Explosion. And the last thing you can do is activate the Bloody Harvest event from the main menu. This will cause extra chances at loot through Badass and Loot Ghosts, which is definitely something you'll want. All three of these combine to create the most loot possible, and is what I use throughout, but aren't always relevant, and I'll let you know when that's the case. If this video helped you out, I'd appreciate you helping me out by dropping a like, or hey, maybe you could even subscribe, or even follow me on Twitter. And let's crack into it. We open this countdown of the top 5 infinite legendary farms in Borderlands 3 with Tom and Zam, who you fight around in this area of Heart's Desire as part of the Guns, Love and Tentacles DLC. Tom and Zam are a pair of bonded mutants that can be farmed endlessly. To do that, you should only ever kill one of them before traveling back to the spawn point and dropping down again. I always take out Zam because he looked at me funny that one time, but either will do. They both have flesh health bars, so taking an incendiary weapon with you will get the job done quickest, and the lump on their back is what you'll want to shoot at to deal the most damage. This is one of the quickest farms in the entire game. The travel point is just above where they spawn, allowing you to kill them once every 15 seconds if you're using something like the kick charger, but rarely anything will do. This is one farm though that doesn't benefit from the Sluter Relic, as although the glowing effect remains visible, it doesn't seem to affect the drop rates. It's also a farm that you'll want to make sure Bloody Harvest isn't active for, as it does nothing but give you terror annoyance. If you're looking to pile up a bunch of loot from DLC 2, then this is the farm for you, netting you a bunch of soul renders and insiders, among some anarchies and base game world drops, filling up your bank in no time. Next up is Scrap Trap's Nest, a great legendary farm from the Handsome Jackpot DLC, which you can begin if you dare, around in this area of the compactor. This place is probably what Claptrap dreams of at night, a horde of evil robots running around in his likeness swinging buzz axes at you. Hey, maybe it's a nightmare instead. Either way, this arena is packed with enemies, and they're extremely easy to kill. Because there's so many of them, you'll be causing loot explosions all over the place, with one after the other covering the floor in some shiny orange gold, and the Sluter's effect will remain active. The more enemies, the higher chance of loot ghosts, which boosts those legendary drops even more. This is one fight you don't want to complete, as the spawn rate of scrap trap units drops way down when Mama Bear arrives. When that happens, you're best to either down yourself or travel to the spawn point before running back. Some great weapons for this farm include the Breath of the Dying, which will down you if you're not careful, and the Reflux, but traditional weapons will proc loot explosion more often but also slow you down, so that's something you'll have to weigh up. I got all this in just 10 minutes, and quite a lot of that was class mods and artifacts with a good chunk of weapons too, so if that sounds like you, then you should definitely dive in. Moving on now to the Cistern of Slaughter, a round based challenge brought to you by Mr. Torg, which you can begin around in this area of the Meridian Metroplex. Just head on through the sewers, walk up to the nice looking man, and ask for some orange mangoes, he'll know what you mean. 
The system of slaughter is a creature based slaughter that will see wave after wave of different beasts sent out to hunt you down. Just begin round 1 and continue on through as the sheer volume of opponents starts quickly flooding the floor with loot. It's another farm that you'll want the Bloody Harvest event active on so you can use those ghosts as another source of income. Unlike Scrap Trap's Nest, you'll fight some badass enemies which often spawn badass ghosts on kill, netting you twice the legendary count whenever one spawns. I found they were more prominent on round 2 or round 5, so depending on how long you'll be farming, consider repeating those rounds only for the most loot possible. One thing that does annoy me with this is the rack, which are a pain to kill, but using something like the needle gun, soul render, or any guns with the homing mechanic will fry those birds much easier. Overall, this is one great legendary loot scramble that will spread across the entire arena. Whatever you're after, it's here. You just might want to wash it first. Time now for the Slaughter Shaft, another circle of slaughter which although challenging is extremely rewarding. It is accessed halfway through Conrad's hold, around in this point of the map. With the vast amount of badass enemies in such a small space comes a huge outpouring of legendary weapons. They drop up, down and all around, once you're done here there won't be any spot free of orange gold. The harder the enemies, the better the loot, and there's no better representation of that than this. With the slooter equipped, each badass has a great chance to drop some legendaries, but that's not it. This is one area where ghosts come in waves, thanks to the number of tough opponents, badass ghosts will spawn constantly, rewarding you with multiple legendaries practically every time you take one out. Wherever you are throughout its multiple rounds, there will be mobs pouring out of each of its crevices, and because it's so tightly packed, you can chain kills extremely easily. My personal favourite round is the second one, but it doesn't matter how you go about your business, the minimap will be dotted with legendary stars either way. Before number 1 is revealed, let's dive into some honourable mentions. First up is Jabba Magui, an infinite legendary farm that's a little different to the others, but you can start around here in Voracious Canopy. Mr Magui may seem a little inconspicuous at first, but don't let that fool you, there's something special hidden within. Anytime it gets wet, it'll duplicate, and we can trigger that effect by attempting to freeze them. Spraying Miss Maguire with an unforgiving barrage of cryo will result in an endless Jabba Maguire army that is infinite in size. A great weapon to accomplish that with is a cryo infinity or a butcher, but if you run Moe's, a cryo hex is going to get the party started fast. Now, normally this farm exclusively results in the Magnificent or the Hellfire if you kill it with fire. But if you have the Slooter, you'll get a lot more than that. If you had that at your disposal, then I highly recommend using it, transforming this farm into one that's a whole lot more diverse. Like all of these farms, Loot Explosion will increase the legendary count too, but it is another where you'll want to avoid the bloody harvest if you're not after Terra Annoyance. The next honourable mention I have for you is the game's one and only raid boss, Himavorous the Invincible. She's found in Dark Thirst Dominion as part of the Director's Cut for the cost of 250 Iridium. Defeating Himavorous isn't easy, and if you're looking for fast loot, I'd avoid it, but it is another repeatable legendary farm you can add to your list. Generally, Hemo drops 1 to 2 legendaries per kill, but with a Slooter, I was consistently getting 5, which is much better. If you're after some company man artifacts or Director's Cut loot and want a little extra for your time, then I highly suggest equipping one. To get maximum rewards for your efforts, you want to proc the Slooter by taking out a Varka just prior to killing her, and once she's dead, travel back and start again. Not only does it save you a lot of Iridium, but a lot of time too, and it's definitely something everyone should be aware of. The last honourable mention I have for you is Killer Vault, a boss known for dropping the Monarch, who you fight around in this area of Lectra City. This is a farm that if you want to repeat, you will die, as regardless of him dying or not, when you respawn just like the Jackson 5, Killer Vault will be there. He is immune to shock and has the big shield, which is annoying and makes radiation the best element to use on him. 
Not only will this method net you monarchs faster than before, but if you manage to proc the Sluter by defeating a bandit just prior to Killavolt, you'll get more loot overall. Killavolt is worth the farm anyway because he's the best source of the monarch, but being able to rinse and repeat makes him that much better. Number 1, we made it, we did it because we can, and it's Freddy the Trader, another legendary farm from the Handsome Jackpot DLC, but this one's fantastic. You can find him hanging out around here in the VIP tower. Unlike the other farms, this one requires a little setting up, but when you have it set, you'll soon be blinded by the sheer amount of legendaries you'll spawn. Before this farm can start for real, you need to clear out some loader bots and then Freddy will spawn with Dandelion and Petunia at his side. Sometimes he spawns at level 2, which is strange, but he still drops max level loot, which makes things go by a whole lot quicker, even though at level 74 he's still easy to kill. This farm netted me considerably more legendaries than any other on this list, and it only took me 10 minutes to gather all the loot you see on screen before you, and I wasn't even that efficient. I say that because this is one farm where you can use the Sluter to jump to completely new heights. Without it, he drops 1-3 to three legendaries per kill, which is still great, but if you can proc it by dropping one of his sidekicks first, you can get up to 12. Yes, 12. That is insane, and is why this farm is the best going round. I have to admit that each time you kill him, he will drop an auto aim, which is a poor sniper rifle, but that barely sours the sweet, sweet cake. Bloody Harvest can further increase your legendary drops during those periods where loader bots spawn, but it doesn't add too much to make a big difference. In this loot pool, you'll find DLC 1 class mods too, which are great for Zane and Flak and even Moe's, which is another big plus, but the legendary count is certainly its highlight producing more quality legendaries faster than anywhere else. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the top 5 infinite legendary farming locations in Borderlands 3. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.